Hi guys, Jay here at DW Music. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Uh, today is the first in a series that we're going to do on all of our brand new Yamahas that we have in stock here at the music store. First we're going to do all of our upright pianos and then we'll maybe move into some grands as well. Uh, I'm very excited today to be joined by my colleague Sally Greenaway. Uh, the reason I've asked Sally to join me is because not only she's a great piano player obviously, but she's also got a really broad range of experience in the music industry using piano. She's a piano teacher, a composer, performing artist, recording artist. She's done a lot of stuff, so I think we can get a lot of insight from her experience. Hey, Sally. Hi, Jay. How's it going? Yeah, good. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Uh, so, Sally, today I think we could just start with talking about Yamaha U1s. Uh, so maybe you could just give us a little overview of what the U1 is. Uh, well, U1s are uh, 121 centimeter piano, so they're a mid-sized piano. They're not the tallest you can get, mm -hmm. but they're, in my opinion, they're like the the best workhorse piano because they're excellent size to power ratio. Um, yeah. Just the physics of the instrument, um, they've really maximized it, so it actually pro provides really great playing experience for the player, and it's a very versatile instrument. Yeah, cool. So Yamaha do like a, a range of U1s, right? Mm -hmm. So I've got the Japanese U1 here behind mm -hmm. me, kind of the, the, the solid standard model. And then you've got one of the U1Js behind yeah. you in a really nice finish. I know. Um, well, the U1J is the one that's coming out of Indonesia. Yeah. And um, these guys, they make beautiful art cases as well. So you can obviously get shiny black ones or you mm. can get unusual art case designs. And this one's in a satin finish, mm. um, which is really beautiful. And yeah, I, I think they're fantastic. This one's my favorite. Really? <laughs> Cool. So even though they look different, I think the most important thing that people are looking for when they when they purchase a piano is the touch and yeah, the, the sound. Yeah, the quality. Yeah. Um, so they both come out of a Yamaha factory. Yes. One's in Japan, one's in Indonesia. Do you feel a difference or hear a difference between the two? No. I mean, obviously, every piano has its unique sound because it's got natural things in it, like timbers and felts, and there's handmade elements in the instrument. But um, in terms of the quality output out of both both factories, I mean, it's Yamaha quality. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I particularly love this instrument um, and it, it feels really good. They feel exactly the same to me when I've played both of them. Um, and in terms of the tonal color, the, the, the feeling of the keys, the touch, everything mm. feels very consistent, very good quality. Yeah, and you don't hear much of a difference either? No, not at all. No, they feel like they could have been out of the same factory. Cool, yeah. yeah. I, we've had a lot of people in the store who do hear a difference and a lot of people who don't. So I think it's a very much a personal preference. Yeah, thing. And, and particularly with the touch when you're performing, you, you want or practicing, you want to have something that's consistent and they do feel the same. Yeah, cool. So Sally, you're quite a busy piano teacher, right? And you have quite a spectrum of um, students. You have some young children who are just starting piano and then you have some experienced adults who come to you to refine their their craft. And beginning adults. And beginning adults, yeah, yeah. like me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when you're advising a student on what to look for in a piano, what what do you say to them and what is the ideal thing that you you would want them to learn on? Well, my dream would be for all of them to have access to an acoustic piano. Yeah. Uh, because And it has to be a good one um, because we're trying to develop um, good technique and through good technique you then create great sound mm. and through creating great sound you then make great music and you connect with music and that's what it's all about is uh, is being able to communicate musically and have that feeling that you get when you play music mm. um, and so of course developing this structure this hand shape when you're on the piano being able to be able to stand on the keys yeah uh, also the other thing the reason why I really want them to have an acoustic is because they are creating the sound manually. There's all these mm. moving parts inside the instrument which they manually, so through all of their own anatomy moving to create sound, the sound then goes through the key, through the action of the instrument and hits a string. Mm. And then wood resonates and you create the sound. And so learning how to stand on the key is really important to me um, for developing good technique, but also then having an instrument that responds and gives you that feedback back. Yeah, um, there's like uh, communication between the player and the, and the instrument. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And to me, that's the most important thing because um, it's, it's not this instrument making the sound for you in terms of like, uh, for example, say a digital instrument, you're mm -hmm. hearing, um, they, they, use, they, they always sample a huge concert grand piano and it sounds incredible. So it doesn't matter how poor your technique is or how badly you play, it always sounds amazing. Whereas with an acoustic instrument, even if it's out of tune a little bit and it needs a bit of a service after, you know, because pianos have a little bit of maintenance every year, just a piano tune every year, but 
the thing is that even if you, if, even if it needs a little bit of tuning or something, um, it still gives you this immediate feedback. It tells you if you're playing with too much tension mm. or um, it, it gives you the sound that number one tells you you're doing the technique correctly or wrong. Uh, but also it gives you that sound that m envelops you and makes you know that's the sound that I yeah. love. I want to play that. I want to create that magic. Yeah. yeah. So what about a Yamaha U1 in particular? Is that something you'd recommend to a student? Absolutely. I mean, they're extremely versatile. I think they're the greatest workhorse of the piano options of all of them. Um, they have, particularly with the Yamahas, I mean, it has the Yamaha touch, which mm. is... Um, which you're really drawn to. You mentioned that a lot when, yeah. we, when we work together. Absolutely. Well, the reason why the touch is so good is it has the right amount of meatiness to have control, mm -hmm. but it's got enough lightness that allows you to play with finesse and speed. I think in thinking about digitals and acoustics, there's some great options in digitals and they're more of an economic price. Mm. But considering long term, mm. um, how far do you think, for example, through the grading system, would this piano get a student? Absolutely. Well, I mean, if you're going to buy a digital, you're going to have to upgrade at some point, partially because mm. technology only lasts for so long. Um, but also because a digital can only get you so far. And part of the thing when you're becoming a pianist <coughs> and a musician is about your sound, how to create a beautiful sound. Um, and so at some point you will have to upgrade to an acoustic piano to develop that. And that's roughly around grade three, four. I mean, ideally you would want a beginner listening to this from the beginning. Mm. But I mean, if somebody's coming from a digital point of view and they've had digital when they're a beginner, um, by the time they get to grade three, they really do need this, partially because they need that feedback from a real instrument to continue their progress. But also I think artistically and creatively, you reach that point where it's like, the digital won't give you that music love back that mm. an acoustic can. Um, Speaking of artistry and creativity, um, a real string to your bow is the fact that you're an uh, internationally renowned composer. <laughs> um, thinking about composing music, do you think having a, a real acoustic piano serves that purpose quite nicely? Yeah, especially because if, for example, if you're doing film stuff, you're mixing of potentially a lot of instruments together or you're trying to create magic and atmosphere. Like if you think of a lot of piano soundtracks, they're either piano by itself, maybe with some pads, and it's trying to create atmosphere and magic. Um, and sure, like a sampled instrument, um, like, you know, there's so many different brands of samples that you can have for a sampled piano. Um, but when you have a sampled instrument, yeah, it's in tune. But chances are that you're not totally happy with how it mixes with other instruments. Uh, and so you start having to modify like reverb and EQ and really go into the nuts and bolts. Maybe you have to blend different samples together to get this, it to actually sound real, even though it's a sample of mm. a real instrument. Whereas when you have an, a, a real acoustic instrument, okay, yeah, you may have slight, um, say it hasn't been tuned or something for a year. You may have slight nuances in the tuning I mean, just get a tuner in and it's fine. But it's actually that realism of a real instrument. And when you mic it, you're getting the full resonance of that instrument rather than a company's decision of a sampled library. Um, but the thing that also, just thinking about Yamaha in particular, what I love about the Yamaha ones for when you're doing film scoring, for example, or ensemble work is that it has warmth but clarity. So it mm. cuts through a mix really well. So when you're mixing or when you're playing in an ensemble, trying to hear the piano, it just sits really nicely in the blend of everything. Um, yeah. So you don't have to do, it saves so much time in post um, when you're trying to make all the sounds blend together. But also say we take like solo piano, if I want to do like a solo piano thing, acoustic, you know, how many times have you heard something where it's like a beautiful held chord? That mm. ring, that atmosphere, that soul, Beautiful. you don't quite get that in a sample. They, can't, they haven't yet worked out how to capture that in a sampled piano. Mm. Um, and this is actually what you're getting when you get an acoustic instrument. Yeah. Mm. So considering what you said there about the tone of Yamaha serving that like in re a recording environment quite nicely, mm. I think also um, in an ensemble environment, particularly maybe in, for like jazz, I know you play a lot of jazz, mm. you've got a very varied re repertoire. But playing in jazz ensembles a lot, it seems to me that a 121 centimeter Yamaha is kind of an ideal fit for that purpose. Also, yeah, exactly, because of its sound, um, being warm, but also um, having that nice kind of clarity to its sound. Mm. Uh, but in particular, 
this size of piano, it's only the mid size. So it means that I can look over the top and I can communicate to my bass player or my drummer or yeah. whoever's in the band and or watch a conductor. Um, and it's not getting in the way at all. And it means I can have the piano angled at any which way and I'll be able to fit on the stage and uh, be able to see properly. And uh, I think that's very important actually. Yeah, <laughs> Especially yeah. like if you think of school bands, for example, um, if you don't have the space and the money for a grand piano, then having it upright of this size is ideal because mm. apart from the fact <coughs> that it's gonna feel good for the player um, and do what the player asks it to do, it will also blend well with the other instruments. It will have the clarity that you need to hear the piano part in amongst a band, mm. uh, but also it has that visibility as well. Yeah. I think uh, overall, the Yamaha U1 is really versatile for its size, right? Like you said, the power to size ratio. Can you maybe just play us two very varied pieces, something dark and warm and mellow, and then something with a lot of energy? Mm, sure. Um, Maybe I'll play uh, something folk inspired. Cool. Uh, one, of, one of the pieces I wrote, this is called Dawn of Evening. Sounds nice. Uh, I'm particularly interested in <laughs> listening for the space and the atmosphere that this creates. amazing is the bass for a piano of that size? I know, normally you would want longer strings to get bigger bass, yeah. but for this, like I said, like there's something about the size of this piano, they've really worked out how to get the right amount of bass string for the power, so it's very good sounding piano, even yeah. though it's a short piano. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you could play a something a little bigger, really try and test the tonal range of the piano. Yeah, push the piano Yeah, a bit. something with some good dynamics. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, how about some Swinstead? Sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. That was awesome. Oh, thanks, Jay. It sounded like you really had control of the dynamics when you were playing. Yeah, I mean, this piano has a huge dynamic range. And as mm. you can hear, it's very consistent in its tone across the full range from the bottom right to the top. Mm. There's no empty pockets of like where it sounds like I've lost the tonal control. The other thing is the feel across from the bottom to the top is very consistent. I know what to mm. expect across the full keyboard. The other thing is when I ask it to voice certain things, if I want to create a brighter sound, 
I ask it and it does do it for me. Mm. Which again, thinking about teaching, that's really important. Learning how to create layers of sound and contrast of tonal sound, of a brighter sound and a darker sound mm. together. Um, and yeah, it delivers very well. Really yeah. pleased to play cool. something like this. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Sally. It's been great talking to you. I think, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. It's a very versatile instrument. It suits, definitely suits students of all levels and it can be used in many different kinds of environments. So Absolutely. Yeah. Thank yes, you so much. It's a good instrument. Cool.